And good evening and welcome to this week's edition of the Pete Mazzetti Show. My guest this evening is Jim Crawford from the Old Chaybrook Westbrook Exchange Club. Jim, welcome. How are you? Good to see you again, Pete. Good to see you, my friends. How, how, how have you been? Good, good. Good. Excellent. So tell us a little bit about the Old Chaybrook Westbrook Exchange Club and what exactly you guys do. Sure. Well, the club has been uh, joined together since the uh, early 90s. Uh, Westbrook and Old Saybrook merged their clubs. And uh, we're primarily a service organization that focuses on the prevention of child abuse. Uh, that's the national model. The national has uh, been around for over 100 years. And we meet twice a month locally. And um, we plan events and, and uh, programs to honor uh, youth and other folks in the community who uh, do good things. Very cool, and you guys, yeah. you guys, you guys meet locally. When are your meetings? We our meetings are uh, the first and uh, third Wednesdays at Luigi's. Okay. Uh, we we gather at five thirty, and then uh, in the lounge, and then go up to dinner at six. And uh, there'll be an email on this uh, show that you'll see that yeah. uh, you can contact us if you're interested in joining. We'd love to have some new members. Uh, like most service organizations, it's a challenge these days to keep membership up. People have so many things going on that uh, uh, with two parents working and uh, the pace of life, um, we find it really hard as well as other clubs do to keep keep a strong membership base. But we have, we have a pretty solid group of about 12 to 15 and we, we kind of divide up the work and uh, make sure that uh, things that need to get done get done and we have a calendar that's pretty consistent annually and as a result of that everybody kind of knows their role and and what their place is in the club and we make uh, we make things happen with very few members cool how many yeah. members do we have but anywhere from 12 to 15 about 10 consistently approach uh, all of the meetings and and um, are active uh, we don't we don't meet very much in the summer months but we do have one of our major activities in the summer uh, uh, road race yeah. that we uh, co-sponsor with the Old Saber uh, Chamber of Commerce. Very but nice. tonight, yeah, I'm here because uh, we have a more immediate event coming up this Friday, Aha. Uh, June 7th at the Oaks Club in uh, Westbrook, and it is our 25th annual wine tasting. Really? That's right. It's well, it's actually a wine and microbrew tasting, and uh, we build it as the largest one on the shoreline. There are a lot of people who do wine tastings. Uh, but very few have the number of vendors that we have. We traditionally bring in at least 25 vendors who uh, line the walls around the, the great room at uh, the Elks and are available for uh, tastings and for placing of orders that can be uh, filled through the cordial shop. Our, our gracious hosts from Absolutely. Old Sabre, who right. have been invaluable partners for almost all of the 25 years, uh, Nick, Chris Revenikas and uh, all of the all of the uh, all of the family members. Uh, Maria has taken over the most active role as uh, uh, coordinator for the cordial shop, and, and uh, we're totally indebted to them because these wine tastings primarily are work done by by the vendors, and uh, really we we pick the venue, uh, we set the date, we make sure we have. Uh, the right kind of food to accompany the uh, the wines and beers, and pretty much the rest of it is done by the vendors and and uh, the folks at the cordial shop to make now, it all come about. There you go. What types of vendors do we have normally? Well, we have we have multiple uh, local breweries, um, uh, uh, Two Roads, uh, Hooker, um, uh, three uh, thirty mile, right? Okay. And so you'll, you'll, you'll recognize a lot of the brands, but then there'll be a few that are new and are introduced that uh, you might not come upon before. Uh, we have a few of the uh, specialty uh, liquor items. There's always someone there from Fireball. There probably will be another one uh, there from uh, Brown Sugar Bourbon, which is a, uh, it's, it's starting to take off. And um, they're heavily advertised on uh, Nesson and, and uh, Boston Red Sox games, so cool. it's a it's a new and emerging product that's uh, about to really take off nationally. So it's you know and there's champagne vendors, um, and we you know there's there's 
they're very generous. They they uh, are completely uh, donate all of their time, all their product, and as a direct result, we're able to uh, take whatever profits we make, and uh, all of the profits are divided up between the youth and family services organizations in in Westbrook and Old Saybrook. So. Uh, this is a benefit that uh, we're very happy to do every year and for the most part once we've covered expenses we're able to give them whatever we can in terms of the profit that's made. The, uh, the tickets are on sale right now for $40. You can get them at the Cordial Shop, you can get them at Andy's Paint Shop on Main Street in Old Saybrook and uh, if need be uh, you send something to that email address and we can we can verify that you've asked in advance so that you don't have to pay the price at the door, which is $45. Very nice. So with the size of the event and with the location, we bring in a terrific musician every year to provide uh, some accompaniment to uh, the festivities. And we're proud to have back uh, Joe Grieco again, who Joe's been with us for about 20 of the 25 years. Wow. He's been a talented uh, performer that's been all around Connecticut for a number of years and uh, he's primarily a keyboard guy but uh, he has a terrific voice and, and uh, so he's there for us and he uh, he plays during the event which is from 5.30 to 8. Nice. Yeah. Now how did the idea of the wine tasting come about? Well over 25 years ago now we, we were in search of a new funding opportunity. We used to do uh, casino night. Okay. And uh, that was obviously before the casinos yes. were born. Right. And that was extremely profitable. We did it for the most part at Water's Edge, but uh, it had been held at other venues also. And uh, we brought uh, pretty much a, uh, as professional as we could be, a professional atmosphere to it with uh, primarily uh, blackjack but it was uh, uh, it was a very lucrative event well that all went out the window when the state and the uh, tribes had an agreement yeah. about uh, gambling and yeah gambling and and where and what would be allowed for charitable organizations so uh, we knew of a model that existed um, primarily the one that we heard about was the one up in uh, Waterbury and uh, our president at the time, uh, uh, Stephen, he, he was very big into, uh, uh, into getting us into that whole operation and we modeled it uh, after several different programs. But I think what put us over the edge was the, the presentation we had from a, go, a guy named Joe uh, Petruzzi who was a Waterbury Exchange Club president at the time. And he talked to us about how lucrative it was and uh, how much fun it was for the community, and it worked out. Uh, it worked out great. So Steve Sheehan, as I said, was the one who uh, got us off the ground, and uh, we've been roaring ever since. We were in we were in um, Alea's, uh, actually the White House, before Alea's, and in Saybrook, uh, and and Old Saybrook, yeah, 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 absolutely. And uh, when Alea's closed, we. We did a few at a Dock and Dine, and sure. that was a great location. Oh, of yeah. course, the demise of Dock and Dine, and it's hopefully it gets resurrected. I'm but the, hoping. The, the, the demise of Dock and Dine pushed us to another locale, and we've had tremendous partnership with the Elks Club. They've been, uh, I mean, it's a great space. The deck is open on a, on a beautiful June night. It's terrific to, uh, to have an event there. Uh, Paul, who's the head chef, does uh, serious, serious heavy hors d'oeuvres, and uh, it's it's well worth the forty dollars. It's um, and it actually the forty dollars is a lot less than what you see in some of these smaller operations that that uh, do the same type of thing, but on a much more limited scale. So we're very proud of the fact that we have a huge buy-in on the part of the vendors and the folks at the cordial shop um, we're we're completely indebted to them we gave them uh, uh, an award uh, a couple of years ago and thanks for uh, all the work they they uh, they've done for us and the community and they're very generous with their time and their talent and, and their knowledge of 
of uh, the industry. Now, speaking of stuff going on in the community, let's talk about the way that you guys partnership partner with the Youth and Family Services Bureau. Sure, we we uh, we selected that because uh, again, it was a transition. We we had been major sponsors of. Um, a group that had been born at the Westbrook Congregational Church. It was a, uh, an organization uh, devoted to helping prevent domestic violence. And it had an office in Westbrook for several years. It moved to Clinton and we, we, were, very, uh, we were very heavily involved in, in sponsoring programs for them. Uh, they had some pullback in terms of funding so they had to move uh, back to their headquarters in Middletown. They weren't able to run a satellite office anymore. Ah. But we knew of the great work that was being done in, in uh, both towns by the youth and family services groups. Westbrook's was a much more fledgling organization at the time. Uh, youth and family has been around for a number of years with some very talented directors in, in Old Saybrook. And uh, Heather, Heather McNeil has done a great job uh, with that organization. And Jacqueline Ward in Westbrook uh, deserves all kinds of commendations because youth and family is not a budgeted item in the town of Westbrook. So there's a tremendous amount of money that is uh, raised and uh, either through fundraisers or grants to keep that program active. And it's very vibrant, very alive. They do a lot of great stuff for uh, the middle and high schools with uh, counselors who are who are uh, in training from uh, both Central and, and Southern Connecticut State University, people who want to do a variety of uh, counseling uh, uh, activities and they come in and, and under the auspices of uh, youth and family they're able to, to cooperate and coordinate with the school district and provide some really terrific additional support to our kids. Cool. Jim, would you mind sticking around for another segment? Uh, love to. We'll be right back. Take a look at the people you'll meet today. It might just be for a moment. But the difference you could make in their lives can last a lifetime. If you could save one person, who would you save? ride from your neighborhood to your naturehood. To find a neighborhood park or green space near you, visit discovertheforest.org. And welcome back to this week's edition of the Pete Mazzetti Show, sitting here with Jim Crawford from the Old Tiverick Westbrook Exchange Club. Jim, welcome back. Thanks, Pete. Thanks, buddy. All Thank right, you. so we talked about in the first segment all the fun things you guys do, but let's talk about, let's talk a little bit more about the wine tasting coming up this sure. Friday night. Sure. So it's Friday night, it's 5.30 at the Westbrook Elts. It's $40 in advance. Again, ticket sales at Cordial Shop or at the Paint Shop on Main Street in Old Saber. Okay. You can also uh, pre-order on our email uh, site that's available yeah. and, and uh, that way you'll save the $5 that you'd pay if you bought at the door. It's 45 at the door. So um, I should mention that uh, in addition to the terrific uh, food and the, the great uh, variety of beverages, we also have a silent auction uh -huh. and a raffle. And Ooh. we are, as always, indebted to the terrific folks uh, in the business communities of Clinton, Westbrook, Old Saybrook especially, who uh, year after year help support so many charities with donations of uh, items or of uh, gift certificates, gift cards, uh, and that that's a key part of what we do in terms of raising money. The ticket sales are great. They only cover a portion of the cost, and the, where the real profits are made is folks can come in and they, uh, they bid on our items right. that are available, and uh, they do, you know, we've had 
any number of, of terrific items available. Uh, one of our members uh, uh, is very graciously puts up uh, uh, a threesome. He he, belo he belongs to Black Hawk Country Club, sure. and uh, he is happy to play with three others who bid on uh, uh, their uh, desire to play at the club, one of the prestigious clubs, not only along the shoreline but in the state. And uh, that's a terrific opportunity that's available as part of the silent auction. Uh, we've had everything from golf clubs to vacation sites. Uh, we had, uh, back in the day, we had people uh, donate timeshares. So there, there's a wide range of things. Sometimes we have more than others, but uh, that's, that's a key component. And not only do we welcome folks to come and enjoy the food and the beverages, but feel free to open your wallet and help us with the raffle and the silent auction and you'll you'll get a little something for it and we get uh, we get the generosity we get the payback from the generosity of the public now once the all the money is tallied the night is over yep. and all the money that you make obviously goes back to the community how yep. is that how is that dispersed so uh, in the fall we uh, we call Jacqueline Ward back and and Heather McNeil from the two organizations sure. We have them for dinner, and they talk a little bit about uh, what kind of trends they see in the in the two communities, and how uh, how they think the money we've raised is is going to be of help. Um, I'm a former teacher, so I, I was quite um, shocked by the last presentation we had uh, last fall about the uh, the need for. A large number of support groups for kids in our schools who are having a lot of anxiety issues revolving around whether it's it's testing or achievement. Um, so uh, Jody Kelly, who is is one of the uh, program directors over in Old Saybrook, was okay. talking to us about how they now have support groups for kindergartners all the way through 12th grade, and and there are students grappling with issues that. Uh, you and I, when we were kids, didn't, didn't either we didn't recognize or they didn't exist. I mean, the, the pace of everything has gotten so um, so incredibly fast that that uh, the ability for kids to uh, respond to that kind of uh, influx of information and all the other things that are involved, and of course, all the cyber uh, all the cyber bullying that's yep. going on, and all the issues with uh, um, with the technology are, are elements that are new and this generation is really the first one to have to grapple with all that stuff. So we're, we don't demand that youth and family come and tell us what they're doing, but right. we're, we're always happy to be enlightened about new things, new ways we can help, uh, new ways we can help promote the work they do and to uh, Help the community understand what what issues are that are that are being faced by uh, by kids today. Uh, it's um, you know it's a whole it's a whole wide range of things. The whole the whole vaping thing has become an oh, yeah. issue. Oh, yeah. uh, we just saw the in Hartford the legislature uh, passed a law that said that uh, tobacco products, vaping, and um, e-cigarettes are now going to be. Uh, requiring a 21 year old 21. Age, limit, age limit so that, that you know that's that's a whole that's a whole other interesting concept oh, of because it is. we've got people eligible to be in the military at 18 right but you know, but you can't buy they, cigarettes yeah or... it's it makes sense right. you know what happens is I, I I remember when the legal drinking age was put down at 18 and when that happened then there were much younger kids than 18 who had easier access to alcohol. So there are all kinds of issues that are related to this that, that youth and family deals with all the time. And uh, uh, they're, they're sort of a front line for parents as well as for kids. So we're really, really happy to support them. What other types of work do you guys do? Well, uh, Wednesday night, yep. day after tomorrow, we yes. have one of our uh, signature events of the year. It's called the ACE Award and it stands for Accepting, Accepting the Challenge of Excellence. And it is 
And Pete Mazzetti's going to be there because you said the word excellence. <laughs> yeah, right. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah, you, you'd be an alumni member. I, something like so, that. So, yeah. So, what it is, and kind of in a nutshell, is, okay. a, is a program that honors kids who might not otherwise be honored in their graduating class. And it goes to a student who has overcome some sort of, of uh, difficulty, whether it be physical, emotional, uh, academically, uh, something they've overcome and still been able to graduate on time with their class. So uh, we're happy to give out $1,500 to each kid, uh, one from Old Saybrook, one from Westbrook High School, and uh, uh, we'll give those out Wednesday night, and it's a, it's a big deal for our club. It's a major, uh, it's a major event that uh, the road race helps yep, fund. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, we're, we're really thrilled to be able to honor these kids, and some of the stories are just so incredibly uh, inspiring that uh, uh, we, uh, we're proud to be able to do it. it we, looked at, we looked at our program in the past where we had the Youth of the Year, and um, we found that the same kids were being honored everywhere. They were, all, they were the ones who were all getting honored as the superstars. But these kids, uh, these other kids, just the opportunities were, were uh, limited for them, but they overcame these obstacles, and it's been very rewarding for our club to be able to do that. So I'm going to be back with you in August so that yeah. we can uh, yeah, help promote the, the road race, the which race, has right. become a huge success. It's uh, This is year 10, and, and last year we had over 400 runners. Wow. And we now co-sponsor it with the Old Saybrook uh, Chamber, Chamber of Commerce. Commerce. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Now, for the ACE Awards that you guys have coming up on Wednesday night, yeah. I'm assuming the meeting the meeting is at Luigi's. It's at Luigi's, yeah. And how do you guys... So what is, we it, do, is there like what an we application do, process? No, what or? we do is we, we, we go to the people we think know best. Okay. So we have contact with the guidance counselors and the administration sure. at the two high schools, and we ask them based on the criteria that they now know uh, to select a student that they think uh, deserves to be honored for having, uh, having achieved this success. Right. And what we do is we have uh, them attend. We have their, meaning the students, we have the students' parents, we have uh, supportive school folk, we have both principals from the high school, we have guidance counselors, uh, we have teachers who, uh, who have uh, helped inspire these kids so we, we've got we've got a crowd of about 30 coming My Wednesday night and we'll fill any second floor second yes. floor room and and it'll be a very festive event that uh, celebrates uh, uh, some very uh, courageous tenacious and and uh, um, incredibly adaptive kids very cool yeah wow it's yeah you guys sound like you're busy at the exchange. Well, we do. We stay busy. Yeah, we stay busy. What, what else we want to enlighten people about? Well, I think um, I think it's important to to recognize that service clubs are out there, and and if there's a way that you can help, if there's a way that you can provide some talent, uh, for example, on Main Street in Old Saybrook, all those flags that line Main Street in Old yes. Saybrook. Are put up by the Westbrook. That's you guys. Old Saybrook Exchange Club. That's we do guys. that. That's right. And if you can help with that, that we have we have people who very generously give to the flag fund, so that we can replace flags as they get worn or torn. Uh, like last week, we had a big wind event and a oh, couple yeah. of uh, wind and rain. Yeah, and, all that other and fun a stuff. couple of flags. We had the flags up for Memorial Day, but there happened to be. Uh, a wind event earlier in the week. Uh oh. Yep. So those had to all be replaced. So, you know, even if even if you come along and say, you know, I have a truck, I can help you put the flags up. I'm right. happy to do that. You don't need to be a member. You just contact one of us, who is a member, or or let us know through that email, and right. uh, we'd be thrilled to have uh, have you help us out in whatever way you can. Now, is there a cap on how many members you can have? No. 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 Really. We've, Excellent. Uh, when 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 we were very uh, when we were very well off membership wise, we were well into the twenties, and uh, uh, it's just as I said, service clubs are uh, uh, finding it more and more difficult to get people to to participate. But um, 
we, we, get our, we get our name out there, we get our face out there, we try to be in the community. This event Friday night yep. at the Elks is really um, as much a promotional thing for us as it is for, for uh, profits for, for youth and family. So we're proud to do it. And, and uh, we, as I say, this is year 25, so. Wow, a little bit, we got a little, little bit more time left, yep. so let's talk, let's recap Friday night again. Okay, so Friday night, 5.30 to, to 8, Westbrook Elk, Seaside Avenue, $40 in advance. Largest wine tasting on the shoreline in terms of the vendors. Terrific food provided by Paul at the Elks. Joe Grieco on the keyboard. Uh, wonderful silent auction and raffle. And good company. And hopefully it'll be a beautiful night and we can uh, open those doors wide up and go out on the deck too. So it's a beautiful, beautiful locale. Normally how many people show up at this? Oh, we get anywhere from anywhere from 85 to 120. Really? Yeah. Wow. Some, some we do a little bit more than others, but it depends. And you know, the crowd, the crowd is one thing, but the generosity of the people who come is another. So Absolutely. Last year we had a smallish crowd, uh, but it was one of the best events we've had in years. So people were very, uh, very ready to open their wallets and, and uh, help support the cause and to uh, go home with some terrific prizes. Cool. Jim Crawford from the Old Tiver Quest for Exchange Club. Thanks for coming always down. A, we'll see you soon. Always a pleasure, Pete. Thank Thanks you, my friend. Us. Not a problem. On behalf of Jim Crawford, I'm Pete Mazzetti. Thanks. Good night. And we'll see you next time.